Hi, this is Worth Godwin. For those of you who don't know me, I've been helping people with their computer problems for, well, since 1995. Or at least, I've been getting paid for it for that long, I've been doing it as a professional for that long, but actually for years before that, I was always the guy that people would come to when they got stuck with their computer or they had a question. I was just the guy that they would always come to. And I've been helping people for a very long time now, and I have, through a lot of effort and a lot of practice on my part, I've gotten very good at it. And I have exp learned how to explain things in a way that is very simple, uses plain English, and makes it really easy. Now, what I want to do here is this is part of an ongoing series of lessons and tips that I'm going to record where I'm going to be talking about secrets of skyrocketing your computer skills. And I'm going to give you tips and specific steps, things to avoid, things to go for, and uh, you know, look for that will help you with your goal of, of getting better at the computer. And in this one lesson, what I'm going to talk about is a, a general principle that it, it's not specific to learning computers. In fact, many of the things that I'm going to talk about are actually general principles about the way that the human mind works. And can be applied to make it easier for you to learn and master any skill that you want. So what I want to talk about specifically is something that you could uh, describe as levels of competency. Okay, There's a very clear definitive progression that every single person goes through when they are learning any skill. When they start off as the absolute beginner and they move up so the rungs of a ladder so to speak and they progress from someone who knows nothing about it all the way up to someone who at least is good at it or maybe even be someone who's a master of it, of this particular topic. So when you go and learn any topic, you will, if you think about what I'm about to explain to you, you will realize that you have gone through the same process with anything that you're good at. And unfortunately, the problem with people when, when it comes to computers is that they often get f stuck at the first or second level, and it's a four level uh, system or process, if you will, and they always get stuck at the first couple of levels and, and they usually don't progress past that point. So helping you to understand this, following the steps that I'm going to outline will make it much easier to learn computers and you can actually, again, apply these same techniques, these same concepts to learning almost any skill. So, let me get specific here. Everybody goes through four phases or stages in their understanding and their competency level with a skill. And these four levels, now, I didn't make up these terms. I'm using somebody else's terms. I believe it was Richard Bandler, who was the founder of something called, well, co-founder of something, co-creator of something called NLP, which I'm not going to go into in detail, but it's about, it, it models and helps people understand how the human mind works, and it's something I've studied. And uh, I believe it was Bandler. I might be wrong about this. It doesn't really matter. But he basically described these four levels or four stages, if you will, in the process. And these are his terms, so I'm not understand something. If you're not very good at computers yet, it's not your fault. And I will never criticize you or judge you harshly for not having those skills or the comfort or the confidence yet. That's what I want to help you with. And there are a lot of people out there who can be kind of condescending and... Uh, not very nice to people who don't have computer skills and I just want you to understand I'm not one of those people and I'm not gonna go into it because those people they get on my nerves <laughs> but I want to help you out here so let me get to my point um, so to use his terms the four stages and I'm gonna go I'm just gonna mention them very briefly and then I will go back and go into a little more detail so you start off at what he referred to as unconscious incompetence and again I'm not being pejorative I'm not trying to be critical by saying incompetence there's nothing wrong with being incompetent about something it doesn't mean you're stupid it doesn't mean you're dumb it just means you don't have competence yet competence is something that you gain it's not something innate in us it's something that we learn and develop with everything so that means that you can learn it and develop it yourself too so first level is unconscious incompetence 
then it is conscious incompetence, then it is conscious competence, and then after that, that's the golden spot, if you will, the sweet spot, is to be unconscious competent or unconsciously competent. Now, what does this mean? Okay, think about it. There was a time, I don't know, you can think for a moment of some skill, something that you're really good at. It could be a hobby, it could be your job, it doesn't really matter. Something, there is something in the world that you are really good at and you're probably, there's a pretty good chance there's at least one thing, no matter how good I am with computers and no, ma uh, no matter how uh, challenged you might be with computers, I, I guarantee you there's at least one skill that you know way more about you're much better at than I am. And it's just my area of expertise happens to be computers and teaching and yours happens to be something else. And there's nothing wrong with that. So, uh, but if you think about it though, there is something, could be many things for that matter depending on the person, um, that you are very good at. But there was a time when you were not. Okay, so take driving for example around the age of 16 or 17 or maybe a bit older than that you sat down behind the wheel and you learned to drive and before you did that or when you first sat down in front behind that wheel you were consciously incompetent you didn't know exactly how to drive the car but you were aware of the fact then with practice you became able to drive the car and but you had kind of had to think about what you were doing a lot now with me when I first started driving a car, very first started to start driving one, I was really a little too worried about what I was doing. I was focusing really, okay, I need to turn the wheel this much. Oh, there's a mailbox coming. I better turn this way a little bit. Oh, there's a car coming on the other lane. I better turn this way a little bit. And I was paying too much attention to it, and I was focusing on it consciously. So I was capable of driving. I wasn't necessarily that good at it, but I was capable of it but I had to be conscious about it. I had to think about it. So that's the level of conscious competence, competence, okay? So what happened after that, after I relaxed and I just started to drive and I didn't really think about exactly, okay, I'm pushing this pedal, I'm pulling the gear shift, you know, I'm you know, shifting gears now, I'm pushing this other pedal now, I'm turning the wheel this much. Once I stopped thinking about it consciously and just started doing it, that's when I reached a level of unconscious competence. That's the fourth and top level. Now with computers, a lot of people either get stuck at the conscious incompetence level and they never get past that point, or they may get just sort of edge into the conscious competence level where they're, they're basically able to do stuff but they really have to think about it and they may be a little stressed about it and really um, spend a lot of time thinking, okay, what am I supposed to do here? And they might have to look stuff up and it can be very frustrating for people. What you need to do though is, and what your goal should be anytime you're trying to learn any skill, is to get to that fourth point, that fourth stage where you are unconsciously competent. That's where I am with computers. Now, understand, there are little learning curves that I still go through sometimes but because of this fundamental understanding I have of computers that you can gain too, I'm able to go through that learning curve and go from the, go through all those four stages, in, if you will, very, very rapidly because I can relate it to all the things I've done before. And so that's basically what I want to cover in this lesson. And I uh, hope that all made sense. Now, if you want to learn more, I, and you're not part of my newsletter, or you're not a customer of mine, you can feel free to visit worthgodwin.com. That's W-O-R-T-H-G-O-D-W-I-N.com. And go there and you can get a free trial to try out my lessons. Or you can also sign up for my newsletter. And I will be sharing tips like this in my newsletter as well as to my customers. And uh, But feel free. Just go and check it out, take a look, read a little bit more about what I have to say, and um, feel free to sign up and get my free newsletter or what have you. Get a lot of free, valuable tips and computer lessons by going again to worthgodwin.com, www.worthgodwin, W-O-R-T-H-G-O-D-W-I-N.com, and I'll see you there.